the humble hatchback once the most popular car shape on our UK roads. And whilst they still are everywhere, nowadays lots of new car buyers are opting for SUVs over hatchbacks. But why is that? Hatchbacks are so versatile. They look sporty, they have a great driving engagement, and also they still have plenty of space that you can get in an SUV. Hi guys, I'm Tish and welcome back to the John Banks Review Channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of the best all-round hatchbacks that you can buy. Nope, it's not the Volkswagen Golf and it's not the Ford Focus, it's this, the Hyundai i30. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this great hatchback car. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. If you like new car reviews and car content, hit the subscribe button. And if you wanted to test drive a Hyundai i30 or any car in the range, then you can do that at Cambridge Hyundai. I'll pop the details down below. So let's start by the looks because you might not instantly think of the i30 as being one of the best hatchbacks on the market, but I personally think it looks great. The styling of this particular car have been helped out with the fact that this is the higher spec sporty N-line model and that means it gets lashings of gloss black. You've got gloss black door mirrors and you've also got lots of lovely gloss black at the front on the grille. The grille is split in two and it does give it that aggressive look. You also have some physical air vents as well. These do go all the way across. You've got the slim headlamps which are nice and low in the bonnet. It gives it that really mean look and it's finished off with some slightly larger alloy wheels which are wrapped in Michelin tyres. Now this car actually looked even better when I first collected it because it was lovely and clean in which this grey paintwork really did look lovely in the sunlight with those contrasting black elements but because I've driven it quite hard to put it through its paces it's gotten a little bit grubby. And if you thought this car looked sporty from the front, well, they've really cranked things up at the back. You've got a very aggressive rear diffuser and two physical tailpipes, which make it look a lot more aggressive than actually the engine is. But I quite like that. You also get a little gloss black rear spoiler as well. And inside the boot, this is where the good news continues. Inside here, you'll find 395 litres of boot space. That's really competitive compared to its rivals. The only area where this slightly loses out to some of its rivals is it's not quite as practical in the way that it's set up. You don't have an adjustable boot floor, which is a bit of a shame. However, you will still find two luggage hooks and you've also got a 12 volt charger as well. So if you don't mind lifting things over the little lip, then it shouldn't be too much of a problem. The only other negative is the boot lid is quite heavy. So for people with mobility issues, this could be a little bit of a downside. Similarly, space in the back and practicality is also pretty good. I've got a nice amount of legroom, I've got a good amount of headroom. Six footers will be absolutely fine in the back. It hasn't got class leading legroom, but it should be more than enough for two people in the back, even up to older teenagers. Amenities, you've got an armrest with a couple of cup holders. Unfortunately, you don't get any through loading. You've got some storage for some larger bottles inside the doors. Now, where I think this car does slightly lose out is the fact that it doesn't have any charging in the back. And I think that this is quite important for a family hatchback, so that's a bit of a shame. However, I'm sure you can get round it by running leads from the front of the car, so it's not too much of a problem. The i30 comes available with two different petrol engines and both of them get mild hybrid technology. So they've got a small 48 volt battery, which helps to add a little bit of electrification power when under acceleration to give you a bit more oomph and to also help improve the fuel economy. However, the i30 is not a strong hybrid. So that means that it doesn't run in electric alone. It just kind of helps the engine along. 
It comes with a one litre engine option as an entry level, and this should be good enough for most customers. It can go from 0 to 62 in around 12 seconds, and actually power is pretty brisk at low speeds. It now also comes in the option of having a seven speed automatic gearbox paired together with the one litre engine. But the standard six speed manual is still available on both engines. The car that I'm driving is the N line model, and this gets a slightly more powerful 1.5 litre petrol engine. This will be better for people who want a little bit of a sporty touch added to their cars, as it has just a little bit more power than the one litre engine. What is lovely and has become a bit of a novelty nowadays is even the more powerful 1.5 litre engine also comes with a six speed manual gearbox. And I really like the gearbox in this car, it's very engaging. Something else I like about it is its standout feature and that's comfort. The Hyundai i30 has a very comfortable suspension, which means that it's good for short journeys and also long drives. I'm also really pleased to see that that surprising sportiness is brought onto the interior as well. In this N-Line model, you get these lovely supported bucket seats. They've got red stitching and they've also got the N stitched in them. They feel great and they hug you in in the corners. However, if you are slightly larger, then they do come in quite tight. So you may need to opt for one of the other seat options in the other specifications. You also get a lovely leather wrap steering wheel with that red stitching and my favourite favourite part, the manual gear stick. This manual gear stick reminds me of those in the Volkswagen GTI products. It's almost like a golf ball and you've got the red stitching on the leather and then you've got this chrome effect. It feels really, really sporty and I guess a bit of a novelty nowadays. One of the other fantastic things about the i30, however, compared to the Volkswagen Golf is buttons. It's got loads of buttons, physical drive mode buttons, physical buttons for your parking sensors and your rear view camera and physical climate control dials. These are really easy to use. It does feel pretty old school in its approach with lots of buttons. And I guess that does also feel that way with the charging options. So you've got one USB charger in the center and then you've got two 12 volt chargers beside it. The fact that they're still using USB is not too much of an issue for me, but if you do want to charge more than one device, then you will need to get some adapters for those 12 volt chargers. Storage is really good. You've got two cup holders down here in the center. You've got a bit of storage up front for your mobile phone. You've got nice deep door cards, and you've also got plenty of storage in the glove box as well. If you wanted electrically adjusting seats, then you need to go for the premium model. However, in this N line, though you do have manual seats, you do get some adjustable lumbar support and there's plenty of movement in these seats. There's also a steering wheel, which is both reach and height adjusted. So it should be really simple to get comfortable behind the steering wheel of the i30. I really love that you can actually put the seat down really nice and low and this adds to that sporty aggressive driving feel although once again you don't have the engine to match if you really wanted to feel like you're driving a sporty car then I think the i30 has got your back you've also got some lovely mounted steering wheel controls which also feature your cruise control on the steering wheel which in my personal opinion is far better than some competitors that put it behind the wheel. It's much easier to use when driving. I also love the fact that despite this car has lane assist and it can be a little bit of intrusive at times, you've got a button on the steering wheel. Just hold that down and it turns it off. So no having to go into the systems, which I think is great. You've also got a few more buttons down here by the side of the steering wheel. And of course, everything else that you can find is in the touchscreen. And that's really easy to use. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is a standard on all versions of this car. Although if you go for the entry level model, you get a slightly smaller screen. In this model, you get a 13 inch touchscreen and you get a semi digital dash. They call it a digital dash, but it's not fully digital. It's set up in a few different sections. But overall, it's pretty good to look at and it does feel modern enough. In terms of quality, 
It's a mixed bag when it comes to the i30. Go for this version, the N-Line, and then things do improve over the entry-level model, and it's far better than it was in previous years. However, you will still find some scratchy plastics, and you will find a few shiny plastic materials that some people may not like that much, but there isn't any gloss black, so that means there's no smudgy fingerprints in this car, which I think will appeal to a lot of people. So if you're in the market for a great looking hatchback that has plenty of space and loads of equipment, then you can't go far wrong with the Hyundai i30. If you also want a car which is economical but still engaging, well, I think this is the car for you. This very car is actually for sale at Hyundai in Cambridge. So if you wanted any more of the details, I'll pop them down below. And you can also test drive some of the new models. I really hope you have enjoyed this video today, guys. If you have, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Want to see more? Then hit the subscribe button. And let me know all of your thoughts and feelings about the Hyundai i30. If you was going to go for a hatchback, would it be this or one of its rivals? Let me know all of your comments down below. Until next time, guys. See you later.